Moving right along with the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast into this next segment. The NFL announced a few days ago more news around these sort of ironed out topics that they have to get that really just almost get swept under the rug. But I thought it was pretty cool the way that they broke it down with these new helmet designs and new helmet models that are supposed to be coming this year. Specifically, the NFL announced that this fall there will be 12 new helmet models, including eight that are position specific for quarterbacks, offensive linemen, and defensive linemen. In their news release that announced this um, change to the helmet models, they said that five helmets were tested better than any helmet ever worn in the NFL, in the league. That's that's, uh, in their words. And then they went on to explain that six of those new helmet models tested so well that anyone that wears them won't have to wear those silly um, guardian caps that you see players wear in preseason, in practice. Those It's a helmet, and then they wear that softer other cover on top of their helmet. Um, You can find it if you know uh, what I'm talking about. If not, I'm sure you can look it up. And it looks pretty ridiculous when they first announced that the players had to wear it. Um, A lot of players thought it was ridiculous, but the NFL is trying to cut down on the head injuries. And with these new helmet models, they're not simply just not going to have to wear those if they choose to pick one of these models to wear. Another incentive, another motive to try and get these players to um, wear these helmets out on the field, not only just because it, it doesn't look as silly to not wear those caps on top of their helmets but the NFL really is stressing the player health the safety of them trying to reduce the number of concussions because in 2023 there was a recorded 219 concussions just last year in the preseason in and in the regular season it's the second straight year with over 200 head injuries in the NFL you see that you see the new helmet models Another reason why they changed the whole kickoff format and uh, not the hip drop tackle because that's lower body injuries and stuff like that, but really the kickoffs and the sort of trend that the NFL is following, trying to reduce the collision speed, the impact on these players' heads and how much they actually feel it. The helmet models is another way that they're trying to get it to be a lot more safe. I mentioned before, six Uh, The new models, six of them being position specific, and it's a big deal getting into those because the quarterbacks are going to have two options to choose from, two different models that are brand new this year, really just to minimize the impact mainly to the back of their head when somebody hits them in the back of their head, they kind of whip their head back if they hit the ground too hard, Um, those sort of contact injuries that just really go, it's nearly, it's almost really not intentional when they get hit, sacked, and their head just slams back. It's never really intentional or with any malice in that tackle, but it does still happen, and you hate for that to happen because the quarterbacks, some some of the biggest attractions on teams and in the NFL, you want to limit that as much as possible. So the NFL has given them two options to try and minimize that impact to the back of their head. With the linemen, both offensive and defensive linemen, they will also have a few choices with their helmets to try and minimize the impact to the front um, part of their helmets, the forehead part, if you will, of their head, of their forehead, and just trying to cushion that impact as much as possible without you know, still taking away from the game of football. There's going to be hard hits, but they're trying to minimize that as much as possible. On that topic, in making these new models, they actually removed six of the currently used models in 2023. Six of those are now not going to be allowed to be used in the NFL because they didn't meet the criteria, the requirements in these new safety rules for them to follow. So players aren't allowed to wear those models now. They got rid of six of them. And just with all these new changes and more safety being brought in, the NFL hopes to have positive position-specific helmets four wide receivers and defensive backs in 2025. So they're trying it out right now with quarterbacks, defensive line, offensive line. Not quite yet there with the wide receivers and defensive backs, but 
they're trying to get more of those in the next few years. But with these position-specific models, only nine quarterbacks and 20 linemen chose to wear the position-specific ones. And then the majority still went with other ones that just felt better. The NFL made it a big point in their news release and their announcement that they really wanted to focus on the comfort and the fit of these new models. They believe they've improved that, but it's really still ultimately up to the players. The NFL's executive vice president, uh, Jeff Miller, noted that there being now more options for the players. They want to continue to bring out those options for every player to choose between a couple so that they still usher in that player safety and try and fit find a helmet that works for them and just move on from the outdated ones that still feel comfortable but aren't as safe. They want to find that nice compromise where you can get the best of both worlds. It's still a work in progress. It's definitely not finished by any means now, but that's where the NFL's headed right now. 12 new helmets coming for the players, position specific and outside of that as well. Um, eight of them, position specific, 12 new helmet models. It should be interesting. I do remember, um, because this topic isn't really covered as much, and I don't think a lot of people pay attention to it quite honestly, but just being a Steelers fan and Kenny Pickett on the team last year, he mentioned this, um, trying out all these helmet designs, and that kind of caught my eye just to see um, what kind of difference does it make because he is one that did suffer with in injuries, a couple concussions early on. So when he changed over, that kind of reduced um, a little bit. So that did intrigue me. And now seeing this news, I thought it was pretty cool that the NFL is doing this, trying to make it as specific to the person, player as possible, to the position because not every position obviously gets hit, feels as much contact as the next they're trying, they really emphasize trying to measure, run a lot of simulations, do a bunch of tests with different helmet models, different sizes and fits and everything like that um, over this offseason and just over the time that they have to really make it as realistic to game to the position as possible. I think it's great. It doesn't change much about the game at all. If they can make it more safe and things like that, that's all great for the NFL and for the players to just have them out there. The game is ultimately better when everyone's healthy and playing. So two thumbs up for me for doing this. But also the NFL, on a more lighter note, a more fun note, if you will, they also announced that they are expanding their uniform policy and they will allow teams to feature a new third helmet design if they meet the criteria as well. Some teams have them. The Arizona Cardinals have their all black helmets with the red Cardinals still on the side. The Eagles have their black helmets that they actually weren't able to wear a year or two ago when the NFL announced in 2022 that they were going to allow teams to have a second design. And back then, sticking with the Eagles, they had their regular helmets and then they had their Kelly Green helmets, and then that was it. They weren't allowed to wear the black helmets because you were only allowed two. Now, teams can explore, the, explore that a little bit more, expanding it to three. It's a lot more lenient that way, and I think teams are really going to buy into it. Uh, I saw a post about the Broncos um, responding to this announcement, so you know they're all in on it. I mentioned the Cardinals. I'm sure they're going to have something with it. I already talked about the Eagles, their owner, um, Lori uh, talked about it a few times last year and into this year about their helmets and saying it's a shame that they couldn't use it because of the rule. Now the NFL has opened that up a little bit more, but the only thing that's specific about this announcement is that only the teams that are going through a redesign already that are in the process of changing their design, redesigning uh, some of their helmets, uniforms, they're the only ones that could have it available to them for this coming season with that third helmet option. The other teams that weren't redesigning already will have the option to in 2025 if they inform the NFL that they're going that way before May 1st. So there is still some time, but some teams will unfortunately not be able to have it for 2024. They're going to have to wait a few months until next year, but 
that's really the only um, but um, thing stopping about it. So there's that. And there's also some restrictions that come along with this new design, new rules that the NFL implies to all the teams that are able to go with a third helmet design. The second and third alternate color helmets must be historically uh, compatible with the colors and design of the classic uniform if they want to pair those two together. That's one thing that the NFL asks for. Another um, rule, I guess you could say, that they want implemented is that the alternate helmets can only be used with the authorized classic or alternate color rush uniforms. They can't be used outside of too many uniforms, just the classic, the alternate, and the color rush. That's the only uniforms that the helmets can be matched up with. Then moving on, the third helmet design, second helmet designs must have the same fit as the primary ones, same make, model, and size as the primary ones. Pretty simple to follow. And the last one is that the helmets, if they want to wear them for, let's say, week three or week four, the leak, the week leading up to it with practice and everything, that team has to wear that ultimate helmet for that week, at least one week before the game that they decide they want to wear it for. Following all of that, then the teams are able to debut these new helmets if they follow everything that I just laid out there. And it is, I think that's also another cool thing to see because um, teams, fans just like seeing different uniforms and bring back the old classic ones different makes and just bring back some of the classic ones it's also very interesting to see out there it just changes it up a little bit from um just always seeing the home away typical uniforms uh, i know as a steelers fan that they have some pretty cool designs the more on the uniform side than anything the helmet also does change a little bit but not too much seeing the bumblebee uniforms and stuff like that other designs that they brought out before and way back years past uh it's always cool to see they only really change it now with like the block letters on the steelers uniforms that's as exciting as it gets now hopefully this opens it up a little bit um for certain teams to experiment more see it just bring another um different layer different flavor to these games that oh you look at a game and it's exciting, but you see different uniforms, different colors, and stuff like that. That always adds to it, makes it more appealing just to the visual aspect of the game. It's always better that way, in my opinion. The NFL, I think really more than not, this offseason has changed a lot and has really tried to make a lot of changes this year that bring in more people, the games on Christmas, the games on Wednesday in Brazil, these helmet design changes um, there, it seems like they're really trying to bring in more and more people. It's either that or I'm just noticing it more now, but it, I like the way that they're going. I like the way this is trending, and hopefully they become a bit more lenient with some of these things, the um, allowing players to wear different numbers. All of that, I think, they shouldn't be so um, so strict about it. Having these players experiment with different things, I think it always makes it better, makes the league more exciting, and... Yeah, I'm a big fan of it, just the way that they're going. Saying that, we can move on with the show and a new topic after this short break. After this little pause in the show, I'm going to be talking about the Cowboys and Dak Prescott. It could be looking more heading into a divorce now with the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. Not officially, but the way that the contract's laid out and the draft, now you have some people saying that they could be a sneaky competitor in that quarterback market in the NFL draft. So stick around to see what they're saying about that possibility and what I think of it, how likely that is. That's coming up as well as Tom Brady talking about a potential return to the NFL. He was asked about it. He he answered it truthfully. I'm going to tell you more about what he said and what his options could be if he returns. So more on those stories after the break. You're listening and watching to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 